Hey everybody, Jill here. Welcome to the next installment of the DIY website audit video series. Today we are going to talk about Core Web Vitals. Before I get started, I do want to make a couple of uh, brief announcements. One, I'm sorry, I owe you all a really big apology because I did say that these would be done in January and here we are in February and I'm not done with page two. So I am going to try and move along a little bit quicker. I did get overwhelmed at work in December and January. They threw some things at me I was not prepared for, so I apologize. I am going to try and move forward quicker, hope to catch up and maybe get a couple steps ahead. We shall see. So that's number one. Number two, if you are interested in being a guinea pig, I would greatly appreciate having your website to take a look at. So. You get out of this, somebody looking at your website that could possibly diagnose issues. You also get some visibility for your website and I get to use a website as a training tool. So today, for example, we are working with kittycatgo.com. So I've known Emily for a while now. She does a fantastic job on her blog. It's all about cats and adventures that you can do with your cats, uh, how you can take them hiking, how you get them acclimated to the outdoors, I know she does kayaking or canoeing with her cats. She does some really cool stuff. So thank you, Emily, for letting us use your website today. I hope you find it helpful. If you would like me to use yours at some point in time, please email me at jill.karen at gmail.com. And Karen is spelled C-A-R-E-N. So again, it's jill.karen at gmail.com. Just let me know that you're willing to let me use your site and the URL. And we'll go from there. If you fit into one of the trainings, I will definitely be using you. So with that said, let's get started. Core Web Vitals, what is it? Core Web Vitals is basically what is the experience users are having on your website? Okay, it basically outlines, is it quick to load? Can buttons be clicked fairly quickly? Are things moving around the page? These are all user experience issues. Is it an SEO related item? Maybe, maybe not, but I don't care if it's an SEO related item. I do think this is a critical thing that everybody should be focused on to make sure that your visitors are having the best darn experience they could possibly have. You don't want them clicking off your site to go to your competitor's site because they couldn't push a button or they couldn't activate the menu in a timely fashion. Think how many times you've been frustrated when you go to a website. Well, you don't want that experience for your users. The way you would start with this section is the first thing you would do is check, is website passing core web vitals? Okay, so that you could do with Page Speed Insights. You put in your URL and then you check mobile and desktop. If you see core web vitals assessment passed on both, then you're done. You don't need to do anything else. Okay, so you would just put good here and move on. You can just you know do not applicable so that you know you've tested it already and just mark those down. Otherwise, and in most cases, it will be poor. I have yet to see a website audit that I've done where I've been able to say this passed without any work being done. So the chances are poor, the chances are pretty good that you'll have poor as your uh, core web vital. So let's talk about testing. In most cases, PageSpeed Insights will be enough. Um, I do PageSpeed Insights and Google Search Console with every audit, and then I will also do a web page test.org analysis as well. What are the differences? Google Search Console and PageSpeed Insights are both based on what we call field data or RUM, which is real user monitoring. Okay. That means Google is taking data from actual people that have visited your site and letting you know what kind of experience they've had. Tools like GT Metrics or Web Page Test, they don't have that real data. They're using lab experiences. So they're more of an estimate of what your site is performing for Core Web Vitals. I do find value in knowing both because sometimes I do find things in Web Page Test that Page Speed Insights didn't notice. So I do find value in both, but for today we're only going to focus on Page Speed Insights. Okay, I may do another video in the future about Web Page Test, but not today. So let's take Kitty Cat Go. Okay, when I put her in, I picked a page. 
Now, when you run this part of the analysis, guys, you need to run several pages. And I'm gonna tell you why, and it's gonna be a little confusing. But I chose one page from her site. I did mobile, and you can see she failed. And desktop, she failed. Okay, not horribly. So it's not a huge, she doesn't have any red things going on here. So it's good. And again, it's just these three items affect Core Web Vitals. So the reason why I say we should pick multiple pages, one, you wanna get a good view of various pages. Depending on the type of site you are, I usually choose a home page. I'll choose one or two blog posts. I'll choose a landing page. If it's a B2B business, I might do a landing page. And then I might do a contact page or a form page of some sort. That way I have a good idea of the various pages, making sure I'm hitting most of the templates that have been designed. Um, so you definitely want to do a couple different pages. I usually will look at Google Analytics to see which pages are getting the most traffic to determine which pages I analyze. Why? Because PageSpeed Insights can only deliver insights on pages it has enough data about. So as this example shows, okay, this page, if I look over here, it says origin and this URL, okay? Because origin is highlighted, it's telling me it did not have enough data for this specific URL to give me Core Web Vitals just on this URL. And if you hover over this, it tells you that. There's insufficient real user data for this URL. The fallback is to aggregate data for all user experiences across the website. Okay, So this is kind of giving me a holistic view of the whole website not just this page. Whereas for this page, okay, the singular page, you can see it's choosed, it's choosed. <laughs> it chose this URL. So these metrics for Core Web Vitals are specifically for only this page. Okay. That's why it's important to choose different pages. Okay, that doesn't mean this is not useful. I mean, we can still kind of go through this and find out what's going on, but it's just to let you know, it's not just for this URL, it's kind of a holistic view of a bunch of pages. Okay. So let's talk about what these are for a second. LCP, CLS, and FID are the three major uh, metrics for Core Web Vitals. LCP is largest contentful paint. Basically, it's saying how long is it taking to deliver the largest or you know most prominent content on the page, whether it's an image or text. Okay, we want to keep it under two and a half seconds. So usually, if I see large LCP scores that are way over two and a half seconds, it's usually related to a slider or some kind of image, a hero image or a video. So those are typically things you'll want to look at. But this is just a good idea of how long it's taking to render the page. CLS is cumul cumulative layout shift. That is telling us whether or not there's things moving around on the page. Did you ever go to a website and maybe you started reading something and all of a sudden it just jumped down? That's cumulative layout shift. And I'll talk about that a little more in a second. FID is first input delay. So this is kind of dis a factor that will kind of decide how long it's taking for you to be able to interact with a button or a menu item or to click something. So if you've ever went to a website, specifically on mobile, I usually find it, and you go to click a menu or a button and it's just not ready yet. You can see it, but you can't interact with it yet. That's because there's stuff probably loading in the background that's not making it readily available. That's FID. Okay. So we're gonna check each one of these in PageSpeed Insights. Okay, we'll start with LCP. Okay. So her LCP is 3.7 seconds. Not horrible, not great, but I mean, obviously we wanna get it better than that. I, I would always like to see everybody in the green and we do wanna get this to be passed. So to figure out what we have going on, we can actually scroll down this page. We're gonna look at largest, largest contentful paint element. One element was found. Okay, so this is the largest element on the page that's taking 3.7 seconds to be able to be seen, okay? The, the challenge here is understanding why it's taking 3.7 seconds, and obviously that doesn't tell me that in here, okay? So what we can possibly do, and what I did for this, is I did run a check in webpagetest.org 
I ran a Core Web Vitals test. You can choose the different type of tests that you want. I chose Core Web Vitals. I am not gonna do a deep dive into this, but I wanted to kind of see if I could figure out from here what's causing that LCP. So you can see here, it tells me LCP, shows me different screenshots. So from here, there's a couple different things we can do. We can look at the video or we can look at the film strip. So let's start at the film strip. So what we can see here, okay, at zero seconds, nothing's loaded, half a second, one second, one and a half. Okay, so this isn't bad. At two seconds, we're seeing the title, we're seeing all the social stuff, no logo yet. Uh, we're seeing social sharing. Two and a half seconds, we can see some things happening here. Okay, but now look at the red dots. What is that telling me? Largest contentful paint and layout shift. Okay, so there's stuff moving around here and you can see this is where the logo came in. So there might be something that we might need to do with the logo. I don't know, I'm just making assessments based on this. Um, she might wanna have somebody look at that logo for her, see why it's shifting. Three seconds. Okay, now here is where the issue is. Three and a half seconds. Okay, if we look back at this, okay, 3.7 seconds. So it's telling me we've got a problem here. And if you notice, what if you were on that page and you started reading this? the six personality traits of a cat. And then I start reading this paragraph and then at three and a, a half a second later, this happens, all of this shifted down. So this is actually two issues in one. This is a CLS issue because it's shifted down. And then it's also an LCP issue because of how long it's taking to load. Okay, so we have two issues in one here and we have this big white space. So what is that big white space? We can keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Bingo, there's a Google ad there. But what's really interesting about this site, there is no Google ad up here. Okay, so basically somewhere it's calling for an ad, but the ad isn't showing on the front end. So the browser and the website is saying, okay, we've got to make some room because this ad's coming into place but yet there's no ad. So this is kind of a weird one I haven't seen before. And I'm gonna show you something else in a second. So now we know we have an ad problem. Let's go back for a second. You could also look at view video. Okay. Now watch the animation and watch down here. It'll show you the times. Okay, and you can see it all come in. So this is another way to look at it if you're more video oriented. So both of these things do the same thing, just one's a video and one does the slideshow. I actually like looking at the film strip so I can really see what goes on. So now we know, okay, we've got this ad issue going on and we don't know why. Okay, so let's put that aside for a minute. We know we have something going on there. Now let's look at cumulative layout shift. I can do the same thing. I can scroll all the way down to the bottom Okay. Avoid large layout shifts. This is CLS. Five elements were found that are contributing to that CLS shift. Okay. Site inner. Now if I click on this, you can see it kind of highlights the area that has the shift. Okay. So this might be something in the header shifting the whole thing down because it's showing the whole header as kind of being blocked. So there might be a header issue going on, which I said because of the logo, the way the logo was loading. And this is entry content single. This is also shifting, but I think this has to do more with the ad. Okay, because the ad is shifting everything down. But here's what's interesting, okay? This, advertisement, div class, Google auto placed. So this might be some, I don't know what she has as far as plugins or whether she's just using Google auto placement straight out of Google with the JavaScript. It's auto placing ads somehow in the admin or in the back end, but it's not showing on the front end. So that's an issue she's definitely gonna have to look at. And these two are minimal, but I would still see, you know, if there's anything we can fix here, but these are such minimal issues. I feel pretty confident that once she addresses that ad issue, these will pass. So I'm pretty confident it is just that one issue. I could be 100% wrong without seeing the site. I am not sure. 
but that would be my guess. So Emily, I would say address that ad issue, find out why it's you know, pu pulling in an ad but not showing on the front end. I am not a fan of allowing Google to auto insert ads on my site. I do it manually, so I would recommend that. That way you have more control, um, but that is definitely a fix that you wanna do. Okay, so we come back to this. So we found our LCP issue, we found our CLS issue. Uh, FID was just fine. So that means, you know, I can interact with the site pretty quickly once it starts loading. Uh, but the problem is I might go click that button and that button might be disappearing when I'm trying to click on it because of the CLS. So some of the other things you can check here, these are not directly related to Core Web Vitals. They're indirectly related. So this doesn't apply to the pass fail, but it is some really good information. First Contentful Paint, is basically um, another sign. It's very close to largest contentful paint. So the lower this is, the better. Um, if you're gonna fix this, this should probably be fixed with it. INP is brand new. I'm not even covering that yet. So I, I gotta wrap my head around that one. I haven't done any audits with it. It's new. And then time to first bite. Typically that's gonna be a server issue. So if you're on a bad host, like a GoDaddy or a Bluehost, this is typically gonna be higher. Um, you can look at this down here you know, just kind of get an idea of where things are loading. Uh, so if I look at um, things like JavaScript, you know, is there any JavaScript that I can kind of lazy load or defer, things like that. So that's it for Core Web Vitals. Um, again, LCP, FID, and CLS are the three main Core Web Vitals you want to look at. You can also check in Google Search Console. So in Google Search Console, if you go to Core Web Vitals under Experience, it will tell you if you have any issues. So here, I don't have any issues going on, and this is why I like to have test sites so I can actually show what this looks like. Uh, but if I open the report, you know, I click on Good, you know, so I got nothing going on here. If I had any issues, they would show up down here. It would tell me which pages had some issues, the estimated times, you know, the timings that are off, things like that. So you can also look in here as well. I do recommend looking at both. Um, it measures them a little bit differently. I don't want to get into that because that's a very confusing thing. It does measure the metrics a little bit differently. This is more site-wide. This one you can really delve into each page specifically as long as there's enough traffic to the page. So I hope this was helpful. I know this is a tough topic. If you have any questions, hit me up. If I can explain anything a little bit better, let me know. And good luck with this one. And I'm always here if you need me. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.